So the first question I'm going to answer is from Annibal, and it's a question about Mimblewimble. Uh, could you give us a basic explanation about Mimblewimble protocol and Grin, which is the lightweight implementation of Mimblewimble? I really love this story. I mean, Mimblewimble is one of those crazy things that happen in crypto space that one day is going to be in a movie. Um, it's definitely going to be part of some movie about Bitcoin. You know, there's all of this mythology and uh, stuff that happens with anonymous, mysterious actors like Satoshi Nakamoto, who we don't know um, who they are. And um, every now and then, you get these incredible um, explosions of innovation and new ideas that come out of completely unexpectedly, completely out of nowhere. Um, and are so surprising. And it's one of the things that I really enjoy about this space because I can never take anything for granted. I think I know what's going to happen next, uh, silly me. And then out of the blue, something comes along and just completely changes uh, my perspective. So the story about how Mimble Wimble came came along is actually really, really great. Um, back about a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, someone showed up on the IRC chat room uh, where developers hang out, which is the Bitcoin Dev IRC, and uh, with the um, with the uh, username uh, referring to Voldemort's name, um, Tom Riddle. I think I'm I'm not sure. I don't remember all my ha ha Harry Potter. Um, Trivia. So um, this user appeared with Voldemort's uh, secret name on on this chat. Posted one link to a secret uh, Tor Onion site, which is a uh, a site that's accessible only over the Onion routed network. So you don't know where that site is hosted. And on that site was a single PDF with uh, a paper, a paper called Mimble Wimble. And Mimble Wimble is actually the name of a spell in Harry Potter that um, causes people to uh, uh, to be unable to see the truth or something like that. Uh, so there's all of these references to uh, Harry Potter in here. But the brilliant thing about this is this paper comes out of nowhere. Uh, the user posts that only one thing disappears, and start. And everyone who started reading this paper realized that this was a very, very serious uh, new way of doing blockchains. And Mimblewimble uses some interesting uh, tricks in cryptography to effectively uh, create a blockchain where transactions are private. You can't actually see who's transacting with who, but also what amounts they're transacting. And furthermore, um, the blockchain itself can be compressed in a way where you can discard previous state once it's been spent, and only keep kind of an aggregate, so you can verify transactions without knowing who's participating and what they're spending, and then you can even verify the the state of the system without storing all previous transactions, which would allow you to have a much smaller, uh, much more private blockchain. So the Mimblewimble protocol is a way of constructing a blockchain and some novel cryptography that can be used to construct a blockchain and how you structure the transactions and what you store in transactions. This is not something that can be added to Bitcoin. This is a completely different implementation of how a blockchain works. However, there are some relationships between Mimblewimble and blockchain uh, and the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, because theoretically, at least, you could use Mimblewimble as a side chain to Bitcoin. So you could have Mimblewimble and Bitcoin as uh, two chains, uh, and you could move uh, through atomic swaps uh, funds from one to the other, and therefore gain the privacy of this uh, and compressibility of this uh, protocol. It's very interesting. There is an initial implementation called Grin, uh, which is a lightweight implementation of the Mimblewimble protocol, mostly a proof of concept at the moment. Um, a couple of uh, very prominent uh, Bitcoin developers have done some work. Uh, probably the best thing to watch, if you want to watch something about Mimblewimble, is Andrew Polster's presentation on Mimblewimble. Um, if you start reading the Mimblewimble paper, uh, you will feel as if uh, someone has cast the confundo uh, spell on you, because you will not understand a bloody thing in that uh, paper. I 
had to read it four times just to get a very basic grasp of what it was even trying to do. Um, it's some complex cryptography. Fortunately, um, some of the best cryptographers in the world work on Bitcoin. Andrew Polster is one of them. And, uh, he uh, deciphered the Mimblewimble paper and then explained it to other developers in a YouTube presentation at one of the developer conferences. So that's a very good source for you to watch. And he's written about it extensively and is involved in the implementation of Grin. So uh, that's what Mimblewimble is. It's not Bitcoin. Uh, it's a completely different blockchain protocol. It could be used in conjunction with Bitcoin, and it's got some very interesting privacy and scaling um, implications because of its innovative nature. Gali asks, "What is a dandelion transaction relay, or BIP 156?" Um, it's expected to come within Bitcoin Core release 0 0.18. What will this be good for? I'm so glad you asked, Gali. This is slightly technical, but it's also fascinating, and it's a fantastic development. Um, this is a technology uh, proposal that was developed by a team, and unfortunately, I don't have it right in front of me right now to give them appropriate credit. But if you do a search for Bitcoin uh, improvement proposal 156 or Dandelion. Um, you'll find who, uh, the people who are responsible for this. Um, it's a fascinating idea. So, um, let's think about this for a second. When you make a transaction on the Bitcoin network, in theory, um, no one can really tell where that transaction came from. From the perspective of a single node, if one of your neighbors sends you a transaction, you have no idea if that transaction is coming from them, from the wallet on that node, or they are simply relaying it from one of their neighbors, and one of their neighbors, and one of their neighbors, and it has traveled halfway across the internet. All transactions get to every node eventually. So, once a transaction is injected into the network, and it propagates everywhere across the network, you can't really tell where it came from. And that's great. That's a fantastic element of privacy. Now, put your naughty hat on or your surveillance state intelligence agency hat on, and think about what does it take to figure out where that transaction came from. And what it takes is a, a form of network triangulation, where basically what you do is you create all of these Bitcoin network nodes, and you strategically sprinkle them around the internet so that they are at specific important junctions and points in the routing architecture of the internet. Um, you put some on uh, big cloud service providers. You put them near um, major routing points, uh, important mining nodes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Near, uh, in terms of the IP routing network, not in terms of geography. And then you monitor and listen from all of them. So then, when a transaction appears on the network, like, oh, I heard it here, and then a few seconds later, I heard it there, and then a few seconds later, I heard it there, and if I triangulate based on the route, it probably came from this node. So if you have enough nodes sprinkled across the network, when that transaction appears, um, then you can, uh, basically using timing and the source addresses, try to find a correlation and figure out where it came from. So you can break some of the privacy characteristics of the network by having enough nodes interspersed among the Bitcoin nodes that are doing surveillance. Now, this is very, very similar to how the government breaks anonymity on Tor. Um, they use a very similar approach, which is inject lots of Tor networks and use them, uh, sorry, lots of Tor nodes into the network and use them to do um, surveillance in such a way that they can time specific packets going through and look for likely sources by understanding the latency and propagation characteristics of the network. All right, so here's how Dandelion works. What Dandelion does is it delays the um, appearance of the transaction on the network by routing it quietly first before bursting it out. So essentially, it, it um, uses um, a routing network where the transaction first propagates a few hops 
within the network without being flooded to everyone. And then once it arrives at a specific distance, it bursts out like a dandelion seed that floats through the air until it hits a certain point and then sprinkles out all of the little seeds. So the, the reason for that is because if you're trying to triangulate, you're going to see the point at which it burst rather than the point at which it originated. And if you have enough of the transactions being routed this way, and by including it in Bitcoin Core and as part of the core peer-to-peer -peer network protocol, that will mean that we'll see a lot of transactions being routed through Dandelion. The moment at which the network starts flooding that transaction is removed from the moment when that transaction is injected. And by using encryption along the hops, it is much, much harder to do this surveillance by um, not impossible, but much harder, so the degree of privacy is increased. It is a brilliant idea. And for the first time, you know, I'm a curmudgeon when it comes to names of projects. Like, I think Segwit is a terrible name, for example, um, because the name doesn't really evoke anything, and it's badly chosen, and it really reflects an engineering mentality. But Dandelion, beautiful name. It immediately evokes the image of exactly how this technology is. You can explain it easily to people. The moment they hear Dandelion, they remember what it is that it does. Um, it's so evocative. What a beautiful name for a project. Good job.